When a multi-generational wool producing family moves out of a traditional merino flock into meat sheep, it is no small thing. The Patterson family has run a wool production operation across generations. Today the family still runs a sheep operation over four holdings covering 75,000 acres south of Longreach. But five years ago the family made a revolutionary decision. We had a bad drought, we had a very big wild dog problem killing our sheep so we put up a boundary fence, a feral proof boundary fence around our property. When the drought broke we had to make a decision of how to continue with frequent droughts and we suddenly were considering the option of running the meat sheep lambs on our property and then we did some investigation and we decided because we have so much timber here, gidgee trees etc, that to be able to utilise the timber as browse. So change came to the Patterson family operation. We just run a small herd of cattle, about 100 cows, and, and meat sheep being white dorpers uh, crossed with Australian white rams, which is probably around the 7,000 breeders generally, and uh, turning off anywhere between 10 and 12,000 lambs a year is our goal. David and Claire Patterson sought information from around the country to test the viability of their plans. Our management practices have changed probably because you're, you're used to running a constant mob of merino breeders. You get one lamb a year so you can gauge your numbers on, on getting 85% 80, of lambing in a merino flock. With these sheep we still get caught out now and then when the other day we marked 108% from a mob of ewes. Um, and suddenly you've doubled your, your number of sheep in a, in a paddock and it all happens pretty quickly. So we are having to run less ewes per acre in general to not degenerate any country and run into difficulties with that. The change we've noticed with the grazing pressure is that you see that they do eat a fair bit of browse. So they're not hammering the grass the way we thought they would. They are grazing pretty evenly. They are quite territorial, the sheep, so they, if they like a particular spot in a paddock you may have to keep an eye on that particular place and just make sure you give the country rest. So you do have to depend upon your fencing. Your fences have to be quite secure. They're great browsers. They can, uh, we have witnessed them walk past beautiful green Mitchell grass uh, and rush to a Gigi tree sucker and 10 or 20 sheep will all be around this one tree trying to get some fresh leaf off a gidgee tree. So that's something we've never seen with merinos or cattle. The other thing we've noticed is that the sheep don't actually notice when there's a protein drought and I guess it's the adaption to having gidgee and other leaf. They don't, merinos tend to fall away in condition, especially if they're lactating. These ewes just keep going strong still producing a lot of milk and rearing a lamb. So we, we've been really surprised by that outcome. We think it's pretty good for the country because it's not all pressure on the grass. They will go for the herbage, of course, as they all do before the grass. But yeah, we do find they're, they're we think they're really well adapted to this area. We, we find they're good walkers and they also are a very good breeders, but very good mothers. Soon after we went into this commodity we became organic and so through the organic crew that we use, Arcadian, we were able to send finished articles to Gundagai for, and the organic market has, has in, a, in a dry time is often way better than the conventional markets. Since then there's been a lot of um, feedlotters in southern Queensland and New South Wales who have been chasing store lamb. We've got our local agent back on board and he is kicking goals with finding homes for all these weather lambs before we have to keep them through to a killable sheep. That's been a big turning point in our business that we don't have to keep sheep for longer than we need to uh, and make more room for the ewes. The Pattersons say their approach to meat sheep is similar to cattle. They see them as commodities with the ability to reduce stocking rates without being concerned about a lifetime striving to breed the perfect merino sheep. Not as emotionally attached to a commodity you've invested years and years into. 
So I feel we have a little bit more freedom to sell down hard. We can wean early. We've found um, buyers for our younger lambs who want to finish them and fatten them down south. So we're not holding on to them for the 12 month period to get the clip off before we sell. We have a little bit more freedom in the sales and the movement on and off the property. While the infrastructure for a wool operation is no longer needed, the Pattersons have had to face some cost in responsibly setting up. An exclusion fence was constructed around the properties to protect neighbouring merinos from wool contamination. And the size of the meat sheep means that handling equipment is required. We've had to help ourselves a little with, with a sheep lifting machine that allows us to lift sheep for revaccination and, and all our lambs for lamb marking up to waist height where we can easily then roll them into a lamb marking cradle to mark. We bought an automatic weighing drafting system that will draft sheep three ways on preset weight divisions and an eight metre loading ramp that's portable so as we can, because we're loading so many sheep out, then we needed to upgrade our loading system and it, it can go from place to place. We think we're a better fit for a long-term enterprise. Absolutely, no, no regrets in changing code. The labour required is, is different. We don't need shearers and crutches and mulesing, but we do need labour when it comes to landmarking, of course, because they're very strong animals. We have a cash flow coming in three and four times a year instead of one wool clip per year, so that's a bonus. You can budget better to where you're headed for, and yeah, we have no regrets at all. David and Claire Patterson were brave enough to embrace change. The result is a profitable and sustainable livestock enterprise with improved environmental sustainability. Industry, Government and Desert Channels Queensland support the grazing industry in managing for change and a sustainable future on the rangelands.